Hello and welcome to another video. This video will be part two of the evolving buildings where we will cover all the evolving buildings that we did not cover in my previous part one. Evolving building we're going to pick now is the Persian event buildings. Now Persian event happened and we had two buildings to choose from and we will have two buildings to choose from. Starting off, of course, the first one introduced is the Persian Palace, which is a building which provides you with area of happiness, the happiness boost to your surrounding buildings, main city production boost, let's just call them fillers. And then we have a chest, which can provide you the gold or the food, either this Achamenid soldier. Now, soldier itself provides 2% health to the ranged unit. As we know, as the most useless wonder we have, Sherwood Forest provides health to the ranged units. Your archers always stand in the back of your army. They are the backbone of your army in case of damage, but they're an absolute bleed. No need to get a health boost, because they don't tank, they don't fight on the front lines. This never happens and there is absolutely no point to boost archers health points, therefore this thing is absolutely useless. And as you can see, gold, food and the main city production makes this one just a filler event building. It has only a waste to produce for you daily, nothing there for you, nothing really useful. Early game you could use a little bit of boost to health and fo food and gold, but late game you will not care as much about these. And now it has a cultural boost, an area of the cultural boost. Now this can be optional, this can be useful sometimes, but still this building is an absolute garbage. This building provides you with little but nothing to actually be useful. You can use that happiness level, but trust me, this is just a waste of time and resources. Mine is at level 13 still there since the first time it was introduced and as you see 13 level 406 happiness at the age of sicily well not much to talk there about this one the second building you can choose from on the persian event is the mosaic bath now this building is absolutely amazing this building is what you want between the two of course it's not 10 out of 10 it's an about 8 out of 10 and i will explain you why because as you can see it provides you workers first of all workers on level 20 which is not hard to get actually even free to play on this level you get three workers already and five percent boost to the damage of the archers now this is absolutely insane because you would use temple of artemis you will boost it with the statue wonders and then you will have Abu Symbol, which will also boost your archers. And then you will have this one, which will give you a little 5% more to it. Absolutely amazing. This part of this even building is absolutely fantastic. And if we go here, you can see that starts with the 0.5 boost to the archers damage, continues with 2.5 on level 10, and then you go with the 7 workers and 11.5 damage to the archers and level 60. Okay, level 60 will take you ages to level up, but still, it's a very nice boost. It's a very nice boost to have to your main damage dealers of your army. And even if you manage to level it up to the max, 7 workers is something spectacular. This is actually very, very good. So between these two, and I will okay say about the production, as we see it has a production, but it's just a filler just for you to feel as if there's something extra, but this is just look, I'm H Sicily and they give me 222 doors and everything else, which is an absolute waste. Therefore, by the current bonus on the top, this is absolutely amazing. By the production, it's of course a waste, but this building, if you choose from the two, from the Persian Palace or the Mosaic Bath, then Mosaic Bath wins 100%, there is no doubt about that. So forget about the Persian Palace, it's absolutely garbage, and choose Mosaic Bath whenever you have the chance to level up an evolving building. Mongol event. 
it provides us with the two evolving buildings. I have two of them right here near one another to choose from when the Mongol event starts. And the Mongol event, as we know, is our next event after this ongoing Celtic event. And now, let's see what it has for us. Now, the first that was introduced in 2022 is this Youth of the Khan. Now, Youth of the Khan is actually a good building to have because it gives you workers, first of all, and you can get the first one very rarely, I believe at level 7. Also, it gives you a chance to give you an RP points, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, I have it at level 14, it's not super high, but still I have some RP points chances to get them, and I have two workers on this level, which is very, very good. Now, secondary, of course, we have one filler here, which gives us secondary production of the main city current era, but we don't just don't care about this one. What we care about is two workers and some RPs, which is amazing. Now, if you level this building further, it's not a good pick to level it further. Why? Because at the max level, imagine you spent like three years, you level up to level 60 and you get only eight RPs out of it. Well, that would be a waste. I believe no one would want that low amount. Even the Mad Scientist Lab, which was introduced far earlier than this one. Okay, it was updated, but still provides you with more. So this one has only eight. And it also has five workers, which is very good, but very low, comparing to how much time and effort you will have to spend, and even money probably, just to get that level 60. So I believe this building should be updated, because we don't need this filler with a secondary production, we need something actually useful to hold on to it. And now the next building is the Mongolian Feast. The Mongolian Feast is actually an interesting building because you can choose your production in it. It will eat out your three workers, but you can choose between golden food, if you're hungry or broke, then you can choose to produce RP points, which has a higher percentage than the Youth of Khan actually. And then you have goods production, which I hope nobody ever picks, and then we have this chest, which will provide you with goods, either puzzle pieces for the puzzle buildings. I don't have this option just because my puzzle buildings are maxed. So if you're early game, this will be useful for you because you can choose what you want to produce and you will produce it. Whenever you low on something, just go to this building. It will help you out with that. And now this building doesn't have production, which is free. So it will eat out your three workers just to provide that for you. Now, the main minus of this building is just that, because you have nothing else. So basically, whatever you have in this building is just what you produce by your own choice. Good things about these buildings is that if you go here, you can check everything how it goes. You see here it's incorrect. It shows that it produced one research point per day on level 60. No one would go that far just to get that one RP point. So it would be more, of course, but... All the other chests, as you see, they don't really change except for on the level. Let's count this one, this 13, 14, 15. On level 15, you get another chest you can produce. And this chest will give you either Genkis Khan, which is one of the best mercenary commanders in the game, either free barrack refill. This wonder, not wonder, evolving building is also actually kind of not good. But what I like about this one is that you can just produce RPs and just don't bother. Because this makes my life easier. As you see, I have a good amount of workers on the edge of Sicily here with all my even buildings on. And therefore, I can spend three workers here. It's not a problem for me. So for me, what really matters is the RPs that it produces. Now, out of the two, I would suggest still to level up Youth of Khan. Why? Because I believe it will be updated later. It will get an update because it's not as good as it could be like other event buildings. They're much, much better. Uh, and also why? Because Mongolian Feast is something you have to produce. So even if you level it up further, 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 okay, you will get more RPs because you will have higher percentages for the higher RP amount. But still, this is 
kind of waste because imagine you go through the levels and you get one level which increases your resource production. Why even waste resources here? Then the next one is puzzle pieces, which I already have maxed. I don't need that. So you'll have to wait like five, seven levels just to get that a little bit higher percentage for the RP that you're getting. This building, and I believe it's also bugged because it shows like you will get one RP per day later on. It makes no sense to level it up if you're just getting one RP when you're level 60. So, from my point of view, Youth of Khan is better. Because this one gives you workers. You will get them rarely, you will not get as much of them, but Youth of Khan will give you an amount of RP points without production. So you will not need to put your workers here to work to get them. You just set this building and you have plus workers and plus production with RPs. What else do you need? So Yuta Khan will be my best pick out of these two. The next evolving buildings we're going to talk about is going to be between the melee event buildings. I do apologize if I pronounce something incorrectly, no offense to anyone, let's get started. So the first building that was introduced is the Madrasa. I actually like Madrasa. Madrasa is a decent building of the old which we had uh, since the first release of this event. It gives you area of happiness, the happiness boost, it's very very low, it's very low, it's actually very bad low. But you have it, it's okay that you do. And also it has two chests, one of which can give you Baobab, which was actually nerfed. It had before seven days duration time, but now it has only two days duration time. There was a time it had three days duration time, but now it has only two days duration. And it has an interesting feature. It increases your production boost by 50%. Now, this one is very useful when you switch era. You switch the era, you unlock your first workshops and you put this on. And then you will get these new resources which you will require for upgrades like a ton of them when you just enter new era. This will boost them by 50%, which is absolutely amazing. This will help you out a lot when switching era. For the other purposes it's just a waste, but when you switch era this is very very useful. And also Madrasa provides you here with a good amount of RPs because even on level 18 you get 7 RPs at 10% chance and this happens actually it does provide so it's not as bad. Therefore we have other chests which can give you a barrack refill at a small chance or food and I need to mention random barrack refill. Food is a filler We'll skip that, it's not a good amount, it's very low for the age of Sicily, I mean, for me it's very, very low. But the barrack refill is always comes in handy when I don't want to just wait for my barracks to refill. This is actually quite good. RP points, good, everything good, and now let's check on the big screen. Now, as I said, cultural boost is very, very low, so... It's good to have it, sometimes you lack just a little bit on some buildings, you can just make them a little bit happier just to get a little bit more so this is okay to have and then it's what's also good that it is connected to your city since it has a happiness boost you, you actually want to connect it somewhere so it's a connectable and then we have this RPs which RPs are actually quite good so at level 60 I'll tell you forget about level 60 but I'm just showing 50% to get 10 which is nice. Uh, it's not good for level 60 because it will take ages for you to level up, but the amount of RPs even in the low level it provides good. So two chests and happiness around this building. Now let's move on and check the other building that was introduced later on next year and we had Dovicot Tower. Now Dovicot Tower is actually one of the worst buildings ever introduced here because it has only a filler as the production and has your current era main production going here which you trust me don't need and then it gives as the bonus as the perma bonus it doesn't it doesn't need it 
to produce it. It just has it. So it gives you your ranged unit's health points increase, which, as we talked about before, is an absolute waste. We don't use Shroud Forest by all the same reasons, because your archers are not tanky, they don't go in the front lines, they don't fight, and to boost health for them is absolutely ridiculous, because this makes no sense. Just no sense at all. Sometimes I have questions why this was even implemented this way, because I believe people are not fools to just go for this building and it gives health to the archers. If it would be health to the infantry, I would understand, but to archers, well, that raises tons of questions. And then we have this happiness boost, which is also very, very low. So you might say I have it at level 19, yeah. But just I was playing that year it was introduced and I just built it. Because back in the year this building was introduced, we could not choose between two. We just had to have just this one and that's it. So what you're seeing right now is that in this year you can choose between two buildings that were introduced for this event. But back in the day you could not. So I have this building just because. And it's in my city because I have space, but when I will lack space, it will be the first one or one of the first ones to get demolished. So even if you level this further, as you can see, the happiness boost is very low, health the archers is absolutely useless, and then we have this main production which you will produce yourself at four workshops, which makes literally no sense to have. Therefore, this building actually looks cool, but everything about it is just very, very bad. So never suggested. So out of the two, of course, Madrasa wins. Because Madrasa is actually a very good building. It's very old, it was not updated, but it's very, very good building. Now I will not talk about the evolving buildings to choose from, from wall hair event and thigh event, because you don't choose that, we have only one of each. So when World Fair event happened, we had this building, which is Exhibition. And Exhibition is actually a good building, I like it, because it gives you a decent amount of art piece. It also has a chest, which has a chance to give you jokers for negotiations, which makes your life in the Alliance Treasure Hunt a lot easier. Then we have, of course, chest of fillers and uh, this gold, just to put high percentages of them so you don't get those jokers a lot. These two actually are good, and I like them. Because if you would just get the jokers all the time, the game would be super easy. It makes sense that you need some fillers just to randomize it a little bit. So this building is actually good. If you just skip these fillers of production, this building is very, very good. Now, and the... Thigh event only had one building, and even, the, even on the next year, the developers decided that we can upgrade only that just the same building if we want to, which is Shrine of Reflection. Now, Shrine of Reflection is actually bad, but the main good of it is that it provides a good amount of health to your infantry. The amount is not high, remember, just as the wonders, the amount is super low. But you go year after year playing this game and you get those percentages higher and higher. You get those evolving buildings more and more. And so with each building that gives health, you don't need to waste wonder slots. You can just use these buildings and enjoy your battles, which will become more safe and more easy with a little bit of health boost to your units. Now, all the other things about this building is a waste. This is just a huge filler. This production is just a waste. You have a really small chance to get this two RPs on level 25, imagine. If you don't have any other choice, this building is good just for the health boost, because we don't use health wonders and we need to boost health somehow. Therefore, this building comes in handy a little bit. It's not a huge difference, but it's nice to have it better than the zero. But all the other things about this building is unfortunately not good enough. And on this note, I thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to hit a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on my next video.